the thing about knowing you, Roseanne, is the through line of what I know about your story is that nursing is what precedes the work that you do. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and nursing, most of us have this perception. If we're not a nurse, we have this perception. We see nurses in the hospital oh, or in the doctor's office. Oh, look, a nurse. But we often, we don't know the trauma that you see every day. Mm -hmm. And I think that's that's another conversation. Um, I just wanted to to mention that to the listening audience, mm -hmm. so they know that this is not an avocation that you came to. Like, oh my gosh, I can help people this way. You were helping people that way, which informs the need to help people this way. So it's a continuum and a deep and abiding thread that runs through your story of being in service to other people absolutely and thank you for like bringing me back to that because i've always said a common thread in what i've done is just that i deeply care about people and something that even in my um student nurses days were like how afraid people can feel and like i mean when you're being picked up by this off the side of the road. I did EMS for a little while too. Or you're arriving into a, you know, an emergency department or you're sitting in the bed before a big procedure. People are afraid. Yeah, the unknown, what's going to happen? Yeah. What's, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, the you know, that whole image of like when a patient reaches out to hold your hand and they really want you to tell them they're going to be okay. And you don't know that they're going to be okay. And they can sense when you're not being honest. <laughs> right? Yeah. That yeah. is that case of being able to just sit with them and say, we may not know the outcome, but right now you're here, we're talking, and you're doing okay. And when you can go in to any procedure with that in mind, rather than fear, number one, it impacts your ability to recover. It impacts how you are lying on that table, even, even with your, your mask on and your under anesthetic, like that ability to already bring a felt sense of safety. You can't put that inside somebody, but when you can truly ground yourself in that belief, their body can feel it with yours. It's like your nervous system communicates with mine. Mine communicates with yours. There, it's always listening. And it's always in search, not only of the threat and danger, but it's always in search of that person. You know how you can just walk into a room and suddenly you start talking to somebody and you just have a great conversation and you're like, going, wow, versus walking into the room and you're like, going, okay, I need to leave this room yes, yeah. for whatever reason. So it's always at play. Both sides are always at play. And it's like for I still remember like um, this person, he's literally his head went through the windscreen of his car. And like for four hours, he was stuck with me <laughs> as, <laughs> as, as I, you know, he had to go for his x-ray. We had to get like, where are the glass shards? Where do we begin? And he's lying face down, looking at my shoes. And I'm going, why didn't I polish my shoes today? <laughs> and you're like having that conversation as the scalp was the scalp, you know, the you know, the forceps is, is touching the glass shards and you're like, okay, how are you feeling? You're keeping the conversation going. And it's like how quickly they can forget that they are in pain. Yeah. Or what just happened. It, and the recovery, no matter what, is always the first few moments when you are in that threatened state, the first person you meet those first few moments create the biggest impact it's like the oxygen it's like if you're not breathing we got to get oxygen on you but it's also that felt sense of somebody's got me and i feel safe right now with this person and it just changes the landscape but you know it sounds the like has already begun <laughs> it's, it sounds like it sounds like being being grounded or, or feeling grounded I we in the green room before we we came on live. I was talking about my 
early morning experience on some mornings is going to the well manicured soccer fields here in the desert that are about a five minute walk from me. And, and at sunrise, I will go out. Uh, I have my shoes on, but when I'm doing Tai Chi, my intention is to feel grounded. Mm -hmm. And that grounding and the breathing that I do just makes me feel complete, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and, and grounding, we, different people reach that, that feeling in different ways, meditation, journaling, um, exercise. Mm -hmm. You early in our dialogue today, you first talked about, we all come with a story and the work that you do helps them change the story to something that serves them in in a new and positive way. Here's a question. How does grounding and being grounded, I see a yoga mat behind you when I think of mm. yoga as another exercise that, that we use to feel grounded. Mm. Talk about what it means to be grounded and how that in Serts itself into the work that you do, okay. or, or how, how that serves the people that, that you work with. Yeah, yeah. So there's many kind of different interpretations and understanding of being grounded, feeling grounded. And an approach that I like to bring to it is a lot of times people think of groundedness as like their feet on the ground, right? And then I'll kind of move them a little further into their bodies and go, how, like, where does this level of groundedness begin? So if it's literally you're, you're feeling your feet on the ground, that's a great start. We can go a little deeper. So it's like you're leaving a deeper footprint. So it's like you're standing on a beautiful, fresh, mossy bed of, of the most purest forest. And it's like, your footprint just drops. But imagine feeling grounded from here, but not to a point of inertia, to a point where you can feel this safety with yourself and within yourself. Because that's transforming it into an embodied a whole embodied sense that your nervous system can begin to relate to. Because you're, you're, what you're trying to do is let this message get as far as the brain so that it can like settle that threat center. And when we can think of groundedness as like being this whole body thing and not just our feet, but also how we can use if we're feeling really shaky on the inside, because that can be really difficult for people to even come into their body because there can be just too much noise in the body to even begin to like go, oh, forget that. And then it makes them even more agitated. So hence where meditation and mindfulness can sometimes work in the opposite direction for people. So it's that ability to use all of your senses, not just your feet. We can do something like this. We can look around the room we're in. We can take in the truth of this very moment. And to me, groundedness is feeling at home in this present moment, fully at home and fully with what is arising within this moment while still being connected to that within the nervous system language and polyvagal language is called the ventral vagal state. So that whatever's going on, you still feel anchored to yourself and not just to the ground beneath you. So whether you're sitting on a boat, you're 40,000 feet in the air, all these little analogies, it's like, it's really this connection and anchoring deep within you but it begins with these subtleties of feeling your feet on the ground but taking it deeper of taking in everything that feels basically okay right now look around the space you're in 
there's the clock. There's the picture. I've got water. There's food in the refrigerator. So it's like, it's a whole, it's not just the thing that's outside of you. It's in here. And the more you cultivate it, it basically means that it's always available to you. And the more it's available to you, the more available you remain. Wow. That's beautiful. What you just described is it's an inside out practice. I, I introduced the, the question by talking about by being grounded doing my Tai Chi. Mm -hmm. I ignite it, trigger, trigger the grounding experience only after the pranayama, the breathing. When mm -hmm. I finally get that in rhythm and it kicks in, then it's like all systems are, are engaged. There you go. And it's working from the inside out. And, and that is when I can really feel settled and, and feel grounded. You suggested it's different for different people. I know people that will, will just try to feel the fingerprint on their finger and mm -hmm. just that moment of concentration. And mm -hmm. it's a, been explained to me that it works for them in the moment where you meet somebody and they say something that triggers you and mm -hmm. you can, in an unobtrusive way, just start mm -hmm. feeling that finger to bring yourself back into your body, mm -hmm. to, to bring yourself, to, to tell the nervous system, just calm down. Mm -hmm. I know you're triggered, but you feel that fingerprint? It's just me and you here. We're going to deal with this. Mm -hmm. and, and we're going to engage our empathy mm -hmm. instead of our anger. Mm -hmm. And we all have the ability to find our control, our fingerprint, our breathing, our looking yeah. at the colors in the room. Yeah. And it's a practice that we humans can practice. And there's a, a process called deliberate practice. It means that you, you reach for the goal, but in order to achieve the goal, you find a coach that can help you achieve the goal that perhaps has done the practice that you seek. And that's why Roseanne Riley exists because she's the coach that you can call when it's time for you to acknowledge that saboteur and that angel on your shoulders um, are not necessarily the help me and the hurt me. You have to understand the saboteur and its intention was once upon a time a positive thing. And it's a conversation perhaps that you have. There's so much more that I want to talk to Roseanne about mm -hmm. and her connection to nursing, which she gave us a little sense of how that informs the work she does today. And I'm going to ask Roseanne to come back so we can have that conversation because I know for the listening audience and myself, every time I talk to you, Roseanne, I learn something different about the human condition and, and how simply thinking about my narrative is not etched in stone. If I change the story, I can change the way I think about my future and in the way I think about myself and change my story. I can change my world, but my story in some ways is connected to my, it informs how my nervous system responds to the world around me. And so it's not just changing the words you use to describe your moment or yourself. It's understanding how it all works together. And mm -hmm. so as an expert guide, listening audience, you've been introduced to Roseanne Riley. Here she is waiting to mm -hmm. serve you and help you accomplish more in whatever your endeavor is. And Roseanne, thank you for joining you. me to have this conversation. Thank you. Thank you. The beginning of these conversations. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, we've, we've got to include the upregulating of the nervous system, too. Oh, there yeah. we go. We've got mm -hmm. a new, another chapter, another page to yes. turn there so you as, go. We, as we learn how to engage with our nervous system. So thank you so much. This has been Beautiful. wonderful. Beautiful. Thank you, too, Arthur. Thank you so much for inviting me here.